Laudator Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ, and a warm welcome to all of you joining in this live stream broadcast of the Noonday Regina Chaley from St. Peter's Square on the Solemnity of Pentecost. This is the first time that Pope Francis is reciting the Regina Chaley with the faithful gathered in St. Peter's Square since the lockdown began in March. From wherever you are joining us, whatever time of day you may be joining us, I'd like to welcome all of you joining this live broadcast, especially that it's a worldwide telecast, so I'd first like to welcome all of those who are joining us through the stations picking up the satellite feed made available through Eurovision. I'd also, on behalf of Vatican Media, like to thank all of you joining us through the various Vatican Media channels, some through the Vatican News web portal, the Vatican News Live events app, the Vatican News Facebook Live feed, or our YouTube channel. Many of you are joining us through television today. Thank you for joining us. Some joining through Catholic TV, Catholic Faith Network, EWTN, Salt and Light TV, Shalom World TV, and Atmararshan TV. And those of you joining through radio, welcome to you as well. Some of you tuning in through Luminous Radio through Radio Maria in Latvia and Voice of the Lord and other local radio stations picking up the broadcast and still others joining us through other digital platforms especially through the Diocese of Antipolo we now join the thousand or the hundreds maybe here waiting with our gaze fixed on the window where the Holy Father will soon emerge. He did say Mass this morning in St. Peter's Basilica. At the altar of the chair, there were about 50 people present. It was a very beautiful liturgy. And we, as we know, last night from the Lourdes Grotto in the Vatican Gardens, Thousands and thousands of people around the world tuned in to join with the about 150 people present there in the recitation of the Rosary on the last Saturday of May, interceding through Mary that the pandemic might be over soon. And those who recited the Rosary would have been directly affected by the coronavirus in various ways, some who had the illness, others whose family members have died because of it, others who are providing services in various ways, doctors and nurses, pharmacists, journalists. There was even a family who welcomed a baby into the world not too long ago. And the about 50 Marian shrines throughout the world were connected at the same time. So it truly was an international gathering where the faithful were able to intercede and pray together the glorious mysteries at the same time throughout the world. The title was United in Prayer with Mary, the Mother of Jesus, and now Pope Francis comes to the window. Cari fratelli e sorelle, buongiorno. Dear brothers and sisters, good day. Today, since the square is open, we can return. It's a pleasure. Today we celebrate the great feast of Pentecost in memory of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the first Christian community. Today's Gospel takes us back to the evening of Easter and shows us the risen Jesus who appears in the upper room where the disciples had taken refuge. He's 
they had they had been afraid jesus stands in their midst and says peace be with you these first words pronounced by the risen one peace be with you are to be considered more than a greeting they express the forgiveness granted to the disciples who had abandoned him they are words of reconciliation and forgiveness and even ourselves when we wish that others have peace we're giving them pardon and we're asking them for forgiveness as well Jesus offers his peace precisely to these disciples who are afraid, who find it hard to believe what they have seen, that is, the empty tomb, and who underestimate the testimony of Maria of Magdalene, Maria of Magdala, and of the other women. Jesus forgives and offers his peace. He offers his peace to his friends. Let's not, don't forget this, Jesus never gets tired of forgiving. It's we who get tired of asking for forgiveness. By gathering and forgiving his disciples around him, Jesus makes them his church, a community reconciled and ready for mission. When a community is not reconciled, it's not ready for mission. It's ready to debate within themselves. The encounter with the risen Lord turns the lives of the apostles upside down and transforms them into courageous witnesses. Indeed, immediately afterwards, Jesus says, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. These words make it clear that the apostles are sent to prolong the same mission that the Father entrusted to Jesus. I am sending you. It is not time to stay locked up, nor to regret the good times, times in the past spent with the Master. No, the joy of the resurrection is great, but it is an expansive joy which should not be kept to oneself. It's to be given. On the Sundays of the Easter season, we first heard this same episode, then the meeting with the disciples of Emmaus, then the Good Shepherd, the farewell discourses, and the promise of the Holy Spirit. All of this is guided towards strengthening the disciples' faith and ours as well, with a view to mission. And precisely to inspire mission, Jesus gives the apostles his spirit. The gospel says, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is fire that burns away sins and creates new men and women. He is the fire of love with which the disciples can set the world on fire, that tender love that favors the little ones, the poor, the excluded. In the sacraments of baptism and confirmation, we have received the Holy Spirit with his gifts, wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, fear of the Lord. This last gift the fear of the Lord, is precisely the opposite of the fear that previously paralyzed the disciples. It is love for the Lord. It is the certainty of his mercy and goodness. It is the trust of being able to move in the direction he indicates without ever lacking his presence and support. Renova 
The Feast of Pentecost renews the awareness that within us dwells the life-giving presence of the Holy Spirit. May he grant us, too, the courage to go outside the protective walls of our upper rooms, our groups, without getting used to a quiet life or closing ourselves up in sterile habits. Let us now raise our thoughts to Mary. She was there with the Apostles when the Holy Spirit came. She is the protagonist of the first community who experienced the wonders of Pentecost. And let us pray that she obtain for the Church an ardent missionary spirit. And we now pray the Regina Celi. Gloria Patti et Filio et Spiritu e Santo. Gloria Patti et Filio et Spiritu e Santo. Gloria Patti et Filio et Spiritu e Santo. Profidelibus defuntis, requiem eternam donais Domine. Requiescant in pace. Amen. Sit nomen Domine benedictum. Exuc nunco en usco en seculum. Aiutorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Qui feci celum et terram. Benedicat vos, omnipotent Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Santos. Amen. The crowd reacting to our Holy Father's blessing. Cari fratelli e sorelle. Dear brothers and sisters, seven months ago, the Amazon Synod came to an end. Today, the Feast of Pentecost, let us invoke the Holy Spirit so that he might give light and strength to the Church and to society in the Amazon region, sorely tried by the pandemic. Many have been infected and have died, including members of the indigenous peoples who are particularly vulnerable. Through the intercession of Mary, Mother of the Amazon, I pray for the poorest and those who lack defenses in that precious region, but also for others throughout the world. And I plead that they may not lack health care, providing health care to the, to provide health care to people, not to save money on the economy. People are more important than the economy. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. The economy is not. in Italia, Today is the National Day of Relief in Italy to promote solidarity towards the sick. I renew my appreciation to those who, especially in this period, have offered and offer their witness of caring for others. I gratefully recall and admire all of those who have sustained those who are ill during this pandemic, who have, got, who have given their lives. Let us pray in silence for the doctors, the volunteers, nurses, all medical personnel 
and all who have given their lives in this period, we pray. I wish all of you a blessed Pentecost Sunday. We have such need of the light and strength of the Holy Spirit. The Church needs it to walk harmoniously and courageously in the witness of the Gospel. And the entire human family needs it, so as to move out of this crisis more united and not more divided. You know that from a crisis such as this, we don't, we're, we won't be the same as before. One either will be better or worse. Let's have the courage to change in order to be better to be better than before and to build positively the, the time that will come after the pandemic. Buon pranzo e arrivederci in piazza. And our Holy Father ends with his signature. Please do not forget to pray for me. Enjoy your meal. And arrivederci. We'll see you again here in the square. And this now brings to an end this live broadcast of the recitation of the noonday Regina Celi with Pope Francis from here in St. Peter's Square on this solemnity of Pentecost. I invite you all to to visit the Vatican News web portal, our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube accounts. You'll find coverage of, of today's Regina Chaley, as well as two video messages prepared for the Feast of Pentecost of our Holy Father, coverage of this morning's liturgy, and other Vatican and world news. On behalf of Vatican Media, I'd like to thank all of the technicians who've made this broadcast possible and to all of you for joining us. Have a most blessed Pentecost Sunday. Laudetur Jesus Christus. Praised be Jesus Christ. <laughs>